It's the start of season six and I am ready and raring to go. This is it. This is the season we get European football. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to the NK Zagreb save. It's a delight to have you back with me, except for you, Gio, because you stabbed me in the back, didn't you? Didn't you? Try to keep you here, try to keep you around. You weren't having any of it. Rieka, the bigger teams come calling and off you go. Oh, I can't believe it. Cannot believe it. You are my head physio. My head physio. And you've gone. You've abandoned me. You've ruined our physio team. And you've abandoned me to go and be a fitness coach at one of our rivals. Oh, Geo, 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 Geo. But in all seriousness, mate, it's completely up to you if you want to stay as the coach at Rieka and we'll see what happens. Or do you want me to erase your nickname from there and put you back as the new head physio that's in NK Zagreb? Let me know in the comments down below. That would be wonderful. But it is a new season. Uh, the season has already begun, but we haven't played. If we look at the competitions... Uh, Istra, Rude, Varazadin and Heyduk have already played. Now, Vazadin played Istra 1-2-0 and we play them today. So hopefully we'll have a bit of a fitness edge on them. They have already played one game. We haven't. We've just had our friendlies, which have gone very, very well if we have a little look. So generally played really rubbish teams because I've, there's been changes. There's been changes in the personnel, as you would expect. So, I mean, yeah, let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. So transfer history, um, this is the coaches, so we've brought in a new head physio, we've brought in Kirin Primoz, who may be becoming Geo if Geo wants to change, um, and then we've got two new scouts in as well, which is great, um, one of them is Argentinian, his stats are really, really dreadful, but he brings with him a hell of a lot of knowledge about the United States, Italy, Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay, which is great, because it fills in quite a lot of the knowledge gaps that we were missing, and uh, Anto Gudelj, who again, the United States and Bosnia Herzegovina, those guys come in and really help us knowledge. Just to show you what that does, we didn't know any Argentinian players. Um, if I get rid of this and put it on for transfer, we didn't know any Argentinian players in our scouting pool before, and now we've got a lot of them. I was about to swear, I'm going to try not to swear. But uh, I probably will at some point. But yeah, we can now see all sorts of Argentinian players, which is great. It just, I mean, we can see them. We can't scout them to know more about them. But like, this guy looks pretty useful, actually. Um, yeah, can we, can, we, can we get him? Can we have me, please? Give to me. 2,690. That's not very much. He looked pretty good. I might go for just a um, loan. Let's get rid of that so that we can terminate the loan if we want to. Um, let's... I don't know. We've got the money. We've got some money. I know it's a zero, but we have 2.32 um, uh, pounds a week left over. So, yes, let's get back into the transfers and let's go through what's happened. So, first off, we had a massive cull of the youth team. This, and I'm scrolling here, is everybody that we got rid of from either the youth team or retired or people we didn't want anymore. Biggest names you need to worry about. Federici, Koklovic and Spur all retired. Ostari retired and became a coach for us. Um, Kubel has gone, we released him on a free, he hasn't got a new club. Tramatona has gone on a free, he then moved to Medjima. And uh, Kamara has gone on a free and is still on a free transfer. And seemingly no one wants to buy him. But other than that, it's all pretty names that you probably wouldn't have even heard of because they all came through our youth system. Um, but now we go and look at the actual people that we bought in or first off we look at the outs we've got loads of loans again we're going to have a cull of the youth team again at the end of this season but for the time being we've got rid of quite a lot of people on loan one out and that's for 50 pounds we sold Luis Espinosa oh yes a big money sale they literally just handed me a 50 pound note and took his uh, contract away we bought him on a free so technically it's 50 pound profit Never played a game for us in the league. Never did anything of note, really. Three goals in four appearances in friendlies, but went to the Fire Academy. Played really well for them, but nobody was interested. Um, so we sold him for whatever we could get, which was £50. Um, other than that, we've got a few people going out on loan. Castanada has gone out on loan to Optaja, who... Although being our bogey team are now our affiliate club, so we've sent loads of people out on loan to them. Um, Orzoko has gone, so thank you for the nickname suggestions, but I don't need to give him one at the moment because he's not going to be playing for me this year. Um, so he's gone, we've sent them Brukelji as well, who's a youngster. 
that I think they actually wanted rather than us sending to him. And they've taken a guy called Matt Runge as well, who's quite highly rated, but doesn't look like he's going to come or amount to anything pretty useful. Uh, other people of note that have gone, Palmer Sayovic again has gone on another loan. We're actually trying to sell him. He is joining them permanently for 3k, I think, or three, yeah, three and a half k. So that will go as well. He's just nowhere near our first team anymore. Um, who else? Jakob Pusic, the holding midfielder. He's gone on loan again. Someone that we've given a new contract to, so I'm looking forward to keeping an eye on him. But if he has another season similar to that, then we're going to look to cash in um, and hopefully get rid. Marko Mitrovic is a centre-back that's got a lot of potential, but again, I just don't see it. The Determination 5 really isn't helping, so he might be one, again, that we just try and cash in on because... I don't think he's ever going to make... He's never going to get to the grade that our assistant and our coaches think he will. But that's enough of the outs. Let's look at the ins. So we have Eugene Makarov, a goalkeeper who joins us. Youngster, three, potentially four star potential ability. He'll be someone that we can probably sell on. Um, and if it doesn't work, he joined in a free. He's not got a big wage. So all in all, it's a pretty risk-free buy. Then we brought in Kalyan Stanchev on free from Miami. Uh, left back or right, sort of right back. Good potential. He's gone on loan to Kulivec, and I like the look of this guy. Bulgarian, good pace, uh, good concentration for his age. Determination as 11 is okay. Decent team work and work rate, which I really like the look of. Um, and he plays as the wing back, which is what we use. So he's gone on loan to the third league West just to get him used to Croatian football, and we'll see how he progresses. Then we brought in Gulagu Gisili. Bodvaldsson, I'm pretty sure is how you say that weird letter. The sort of P letter, I think he's actually a B. I think it's like Podvaldsson. Um An absolutely amazing name. He's been brought into us. His physical stats are incredible. Um, who did we get him from? We got him from, oh yeah, Calgary Football Foothills Club. Yeah. Um, where he did okay in the few games he had for them. But yeah, good potential, good two-star current ability already. Hopefully get a lot of games in the under-19s to bring this along. Determination 10, again, is a little bit of a worry, but the physical stats are what drew me into it. Right back, he should be pretty decent. He should grow into something that we can at least sell on, and he's got a long contract, so I made sure to narrow him down just because I think he's one of the people that we'll be able to sell. Then we've bought in what could be one of my best bargain buys, I think, in the save. We've bought in Samuel Tuomasi. Tu Tuomasi. Tu Tuomasi, probably. Already, he's 20 Ghana and five caps for Ghana. Um, one of our highest paid players again at the club, but already a four-star current ability player. Crossing's a bit shit, dribbling's a bit shit, but everything else, other than off the ball, is uh, looking all right. Marking's okay, tackling's good for a defender. His, part, his, his going forward stats are a bit weak other than his pace, but he'll work on them when he gets the football. He will more than likely be our starting right back for most of the season. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Again, determination could be an issue, but I'm looking forward to seeing this guy play. If it all goes tits up, I'd imagine we'll be able to sell him for more than the 16.5k that we bought him in for. So, yeah, excited by Samuel Tumasi. Uh, next up, Matt Runge joined us from Solin. This is a guy um, who has gone on loan to, on loan to Opcha. Very highly rated with it, um, potential. And... I don't know. We'll see how he gets on. He's got a pretty, pretty decent contract with us. He's actually gone on over two years, I think, um, to Opcha, or two seasons. Next up, we've I've tried I've tried to solve the goalkeeping issue. I think all those people that watched last season's or la yeah last season's episodes, I was getting very annoyed with Thubes, and I did say towards the end of it I shouldn't be getting that annoyed with him because he's actually played pretty well. Well. I've signed two new goalkeepers to, to give him some competition. One of them is Antelier Ayaseov, who came from Banat, who are not a well-known team. I think like to know, I think, quite a lot and know quite a lot about football. I've never heard of Banat. Um, they play in Armenia, so shockingly, he's an Armenian. But he's pretty good. Three and a half star current ability, four star potential ability, 27 years old, one and a half K a week. Um... Really good reflexes, really good handling, decisions is fine, acceleration off his line is good, really low eccentricity, which is much better than Thubes, Thubes is like 14 I think. Uh, good bravery, so we'll come out one on ones as well, decent positioning, decent rushing out, an all round decent looking goalkeeper. However, we know from history, my goalkeeper purchases other than Thubes have been pretty crap. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see 
how he gets on. He does have competition for place that we'll get onto in a minute, but after him we brought in um, a centre-back in Filip Mitrovic, who uh, looks pretty good, solid. Um, he's going to be a rotation slash backup player. I don't know how much he'll come in, but we've got rid of a lot of centre-backs, so we've only got... We had Skender and Babok, and then no one really behind them to do the cover. So... I didn't trust anyone in the youth team because they're just not good enough to play. So he comes in um, and there's another centre-back to come as well. And as you see, the, the coaches rate him as a first-team player in his prime years. And he's come from Montenegro and he's he's been pretty, you know, well, you don't know because he hasn't got an average rating. But yeah, so he's in. Then we brought in a, the, a probably the first player with a name that I recognise from the Premier League Oh, well, no, because I know Zeki Friars. A current Premier League player in real life. Um, Stefano Akaka has joined us as a backup striker to just give us an option. Now, there was logic to this. Yes, he's not done very well anywhere he's been. I mean, he's had a few seasons, a fleeting seasons, where he's done pretty well. The others have been pretty crap. But I'm happy to have him as a backup centre forward, uh, target man up front. I think it could be a, a very good piece of business on my part to get him in as a backup target man because he's a bit of a beast. He's got good strength, good balance, good jumping reach, likes to play with his back to goal anyway. Uh, finishing's good. He's got the best finishing out of any of our target men. First touch, heading's good. I mean, getting him attacking the back post corners, I think will be would be a good idea he's 33 it's a one-year contract so again it's pretty risk-free I'm, I'm yeah i'm intrigued to know what you guys think about that deal let me know down below um then we brought in the other goalkeeper for 20k lovely rogic from sibinek who got relegated and in a relegation season he still got a 6.7 um scouts raved about him ken win was like this guy is going to be easily the best goalkeeper at the club so we brought him in, and again, he's a good all-round goalkeeper. He's got lots of good stats that I like the look of. Good decisions, good positioning, good one, uh, decent one-on-ones, good passing, good reflexes, good throwing, good communication, good command of area, good handling, kicking. Um, it has massively, if we go to the coach report, as you can see, it pushes Fubes down to third best goalkeeper. So it's going to be between these two. They, it depends on which coach you ask as to which one's better, Ayasov or, or Rogic. And so if we go to, uh, is it Brett that's got the best? No, not Brett. Um, one of these guys has got good judging player ability. Yeah, uh, Ian, Ian Allen, director of football, who says that it's going to be, between them there's not much to call, but Ayasov may be the better goalkeeper. Um, so what, uh, what I wanted to do is show you on here, if we compare them... Uh, Rogic and Rogic and uh, a, a, a Vasov. I've realised, just realised, I've been saying his name wrong this whole time. A Vasov, a Vasov, a Vasov. I think is how you'd say it. Um, both 27 years old. Both listed as key players, so we probably will do a bit of rotation. Six foot one against six foot, but and a slightly higher weight, uh, more a higher weight. No, slightly larger weight. Um, both right footed. Both important. First team player can still improve. Important player can still improve. So he sort of gets the nod at the moment. And if you look at the chart, it's sort of like, do I want better distribution, which I'm not too fussed about because we play it short out of the back. I would prefer less eccentricity because that's always better. However, that's quite a key one. That's where I think Hubez fell down. His communication, there's always errors at the back. So we're probably going to start with Anthony Aesov and then move to Lovely Rogic if it goes wrong but they're pretty they're pretty similar and they're pretty good we'll just have to see how it goes so that was the other goalkeeper and then we brought in another center back Mladen Jutrich brought in a free um, Austrian center back again looks giving him a first team contract he could well edge out one of the other center backs probably Babok he's very similar to Babok plays I'd imagine plays quite similar in a Babok, but he's taller and slightly better in the air, so it might give him the nod as the season goes on. Um, we're still planning to line up in the 4 2 4 um, because it was working so well towards the back end of the season. This is more than likely going to be our starting team as we go through it. Ramich has come back from a, a decent loan spell um, in the lower divisions, and I want to give him a go. As you can see, 6.96 and a 6.99 all the way through, and he's actually come from the third league to the second league. So I thought we'd give him a go, and he's, he's quite highly rated by the 
by the things. I imagine there'll be quite a lot of red cards. Aggression 17 and pretty crap tackling isn't a good mix. But we'll see We'll see how he does. We're going to give the youth player a go. Um, and who knows, there might be a surprise in the offing because we're not going to look at potential transfers that are still to come in. Um, but yeah, it'll probably be a say of in goal. Uh, Tumasi, Skender, Babok, Ramic at the back. Merton, De Silva, who we know. Zergo, Mihakovic, who we know. And at the moment, it's going to be Mamut and Peritin up front. No chance of getting uh, Simeonovic back on loan because he is actually starting up front for for whole city. Simeonovic. Um, damn it, Simeonovic. There he is. He is, uh, oh, they haven't kicked off their season yet, but look at that. That's going to last a lot of goals to replace, isn't it? 23 goals in 33 games. Our season could unravel if we don't find a goal scorer to replace him. But if we just look at Hall's team, yeah, he is starting up front for them, which is a bit annoying. I also did look at bringing in George Dorrington, but I don't think he's actually better than the goalkeepers we've bought, so I didn't I didn't do it. Um but yeah, it's it's interesting. But that's enough talking. Let's go and get into the first game of the season. I haven't even submitted my team yet. That's annoying, isn't it? Right, we'll be back because this will take a little bit of while. Well, my decision for starting goalkeepers has been made a lot easier because um, Rogic, uh, Rogic has put up a twisted ankle. I'm pointing at it as if you can see it. It's, it's just above my head, just up there. Uh, how far can my finger go before it gets cut off? It can go to there. There you go. It's up there. Twisted ankle. Um... Yeah, so that's made the decision a lot easier to decide who's starting in goal. And we've got our team. Let's get into the game. Lots of people need numbers. Um, unfortunately, you probably would be number one. But you can be number... Th ah, we'll put you as number 31. Because, you know, it's still got a one in it. Mitrovic, you can be number 26. And Okaka, you can be... You seem like a sort of 69 guy, Stefano Okaka. So that's what you can be. And uh, let's get into the game. I'm excited about this. I need to turn it back on to 3D because that is what seems to have got the nod in the viewers is that you guys actually prefer to see things in 3D. I'm going to go out there and say passionately, assertively, um, not revenge, I'm expecting us to win. Like, that's what I want to say. I want to say I'm expecting you all to win. But we're at home, so I'll say let's go and give the fans the performance they're expecting. Um, assertively, a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come. Or I have faith, whichever way you want to... You wanna see that go um let's go into the tunnel tom zerger takes the car oh, no i can rely on him to set the tone he's fine um it's always nice to start with a win we know how crucial it's going to be to get a win to start the see or have a positive start to the season because last year i think we would have got european football if it wasn't for our start that we had to the season so i think it does make a big difference and if we don't get European football this year, I'll be slightly disappointed. But Zerga gets a, a corner, fires it in. Mamou at the back post, heads it back across. Peritin's there, but he's offside. I can see the linesman flagging. Oh, and that one did look close. But we'll look at the replay, I'm sure. Here it is, Zerga ball in. Mamou heads it in. Yeah, Peritin was offside, as you can see. That's where Mamou was standing. That's where Peritin is. He is offside. And we get a goal disallowed early on in the game. Varazadin obviously getting uh, recently getting promoted as well as they have in Tuam Tuamasi. His his name's gonna really confuse me. Um, comes forward, but look at his counter attack. Mamut comes forward into Mert. Michael Mert, what a goal! What I mean, I was too busy fiddling around with the formation and stuff at some point, but um, we will actually just move that over there for now. Um, and then minimise it because I don't want it in the replay. But that'll happen. But Mamut just ran all the way. They sent loads of men forward for the corner. Into Mert. Very good play. Lovely finish. Keeper's got no chance. And we show the new boys in the league that they're going to be in for a tough time of it. And uh, Mert will swing this one in. And it goes again. Oh, and it's just gone past the post. And even Mamut is he's a player that I thought would struggle to get in this team with the signings we made. But he's just so dominant in the air. Six foot six. A proper target man. Sometimes it's not... Not pretty using him, but man, is it effective. Mer into De Silva. Josh De Silva shot from range. Oh, I thought that had gone in. It must have just hit the back stanchion. And I'm looking for. He's got to have a big season as well because he was brought in expecting to be one of the better players at the club. And well, that's what I'm expecting of him. So hopefully he will have a, a very good season. He started last season when we brought him in, and then he played. I think it was five or six games, averaging nearly well, well over a seven. Um, and so I'm expecting the same from this season. Mamut knocks it down. Babox there turns, gets a shot off. Great save from the goalkeeper. And Mulak gets it away. And it looks all to be NK Zagreb. It doesn't look like Zach Varazadin have really got a foothold in this game at all yet. But that's a long ball over the top. He looks offside, but Babok is there to clear it up. He goes into Ramic, the youngster. 
promoted from the youth academy, so there'll be a lot of pressure on him, I'm sure, as the silver holds onto the bill. Goes out to Mihakovic, who has now definitely replaced Mayich on the left-hand side. The silver up to Mihakovic. Mihakovic comes forward. Ball across. Zerg is at the back. Oh, my God. That is a rubbish header. That is such a bad header from Tom Zerger. It's unbelievable. Um... But yeah, we've got, you know, Bamba's on the bench as a target man. Aikwa as well is another guy that came in towards the end of last season, who I'm not sure if you saw, but he's our new backup right midfielder. Basically, that's he's the guy that allowed us to let Ozorko, or whatever his name is, go on loan to um, Opja. But we're also going to be keeping an eye on Opja to see how our loan players get on there, because they've got six of them, I think, which is the maximum they're allowed to take. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens, but we're getting close to half-time. I realise I'm talking a lot in this episode, but... That's because we're doing a one-game episode, and I love... I get very excited at the start of a new season on Football Manager because you've got all your new signings, you really want to get a good start into it, you really want to make sure that everything kicks off properly. Um, so I'm just going to say, you've played well so far, but there's room for improvement, and then there's a lot more to come. Assertively, there's a lot more to come. Assertively, there's a lot more to come. So I've sort of just backed up the same message again. You know, you're playing well, but you can do better, and then I've gone... You can do better, but I've got faith in you that you can do better. So we keep it going. Mihakovic on the left-hand side. He's got to have a big season. He's a player that could be under threat from any new signings that come in. Um, I am looking to potentially upgrade our left wing spot, so we'll see what happens. But Zerga fires that in towards the back post. De Silva brings it down. Get a shot off, lad. He does. Deflected. It's a goal, and it's been credited to Josh De Silva. So he does start the season very well with a goal. And a 2-0 lead sends us top of the table. Can you believe it? Zerga put the corner in. Mamut was beaten in the air by Sutic. De Silva brought it down well. I thought he was going to shoot there. Huge deflection. Takes it past the goalkeeper. 2-0 to Zagreb. This is lovely, lovely stuff. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think about the signings. Do you think they're going to make a difference? Is this our year we get into Europe? Can we threaten the likes of Hey Duke, Dynamo, Osijek, Rijeka? I mean... Those four alone are huge, massive teams in Croatia. Add into the mix Lokomotiva and Slavin Blupo as well. And man, it's going to be so hard to get into Europe. I mean, that's six teams I listed and we finished fifth last year. So, you know, there is there is potential for us to, to keep going and keep this train rolling. And that's just what we're going to have to do. I swear, that's what we're going to have to do. Now, no one's playing badly, but I need to keep an eye on fitness because our, our head physio, Gio... Left the boat, didn't he? So we haven't got anyone as good as him at the club anymore to do physiotherapy. So we're going to have to mo like, keep an eye on all of our things as Mert is over a free kick. Fires! What a free kick that is! Bloody hell! His second goal of the season, second goal of the game. Michael Mert is probably nailing himself on for man of the match here. And uh, he's been a great buy, actually. He's been an absolute superb buy. Michael Mert, look at that. Over the wall, into the goal. How much did we buy him for? Because he... Uh, it was, 95k, yeah, I mean, look at those performances for 95k from Kursko in Slovenia. But, yeah, I love it. I'm loving it. Loving this save. Loving this. Loving our interaction. By the way, when you watch this video, I won't be able to respond to any comments you leave. Normally, I try and respond as quickly as I can, but my parents are visiting Singapore. Um, for those that are new to the channel, I live in Singapore. They're not just I'm not just telling you about my parents' random holidays. They're coming to uh, visit me in Singapore, so I'll be out and about quite a lot with them. Um, throughout the week, this video and the Provo videos come out. It's Paritin. What a run this is. Vinko Paritin. Oh, it's a good save from Vida in the goal. With 10 minutes to go, I think we'll just look at um, a couple of changes. Um, well, who's looking? Is anyone? Nobody's really looking tired, which is, I guess, a good indictment of our pre season. We'll just do the one then. We'll just do Mayich for Mihakovic. As I said, those two are sort of fighting for the, the only left wing spot in the team, and there is potential that we're going to bring somebody else in before the deadline. We'll have to wait and see. At the moment, Mihakovic has won, won the battle of the left wingers, so. I think that's what we'll do is Kurtovic lays it into Borisic and gets it back. Vazadin trying to create. It goes over the top to Sutic and what a tackle that is from Babok. I mean, I'm not too sure how many got that much power in his tackle, but it's very, very good. Tizak with a corner. He'll swing this one in. Obviously, Zagreb are desperate for a clean sheet as well. Didn't keep too many of them last season. Now, can the increased goalkeeping and defensive competition for places make sure people don't get complacent? And I think, well, saying that, the goalkeeper is complacent. We'll just give him a quick shout. Get creative. Hopefully that will turn around the complacency. Uh, I'm, I don't want to make changes for changes sake either this year. I, I want to try and just manage the club's fitness as we go. I think we have two games this week. So that will be pretty tough. Um, there will be a lot of changes for the second game this week. But 
and the other thing is this will be because we didn't get Europe this is going to be another season where I hope you guys don't mind but we're going to plough through quite a lot of it offline so that we can again get towards like the meat and veg of the season as we are like the the proper bit of the season towards the end when hopefully we're pushing for Europe but we'll come back and I'll give you an update of everything like I always do um, I'm just going to say well done lads that was a, a good win I'm happy 2-0 at home against a newly promoted 3-0 at home against a newly promoted team puts us top of the table with a couple of teams still to play so let's I'm going to assume everybody is playing tomorrow so um, Mert scoring, scoring two goals on the first game of the season is absolutely superb so it's a Friday today we'll just go to the Saturday and see how it looks after everybody has played their first game and if you get some news about transfers then that's a bonus for you guys isn't it because there are some transfers going on in the background and we'll have to try and put it down Slavoj, they've got Josip Jovanovic from Split oh no different same name different player someone I thought we were going in for um, potentially but we have Rodez who I forgot we sort of manufactured them to be a little rival, didn't we? Because they signed Simeonovic off us for a free transfer back in the day. Birmingham signed Valerie. That was someone I was quite keen to bring in from Southampton. Um, obviously, we can't afford wages like that. So he's gone to Birmingham to play for them. And this should be the game. This should be the day now where we find out where we sit in the table after the actual first run of fixtures. Hopefully, it's still somewhere near the top and no one gets a bigger if no one gets a bigger win than 3-0 I think we do sit at the top of the table so let's just go in here we finished scouting Mendes Mendes at 78 rated looks very very nice Pedro Mendes 29 year old midfielder from Venspilis and uh, he's wanted by Euro on loan does that mean he's available to get on loan and zero prons pro, prons zero pros two cons um, would be the best central midfielder at the club. Okay, um, let's let's keep let's keep scouting him, please. Let's keep scouting him. Um, finishes scouting Riegler, seventy-one Austrian midfielder. Riegler, no, I mean I don't know enough about him to even make a judgment. Scouting meeting, they found Emil Velic. They recommend as a goalkeeper. Don't need any more goalkeepers. Thank you, Ken, but I don't need any more goalkeepers. Stop, stop the goalkeepers. Okay, not everybody's played yet, so we're going to keep going. Um, I'm sort of turned this into a long episode, I think, now, rather than making it quite a quick episode like I thought it was going to be, or a normal length episode anyway. So uh, there you go, you see a transfer, another one of our wingers, another one of our players, our youngsters going out alone. We just got so. I'm being ruthless as well with youth intakes. Normally, I'm just like, oh yeah, sign everyone to a contract, that's fine, and then we'll deal with it. And now I'm just like, no, if they're if they look like they're not very good. Then that's it. We're done. Oh yes, Mitchelland. We're a. Um, why are you giving me a scout report on them? We're not. Have we got a friendly against them? No. They're our affiliate club, but he's obviously just given us a scouting report on them. The board have given us a new senior affiliate, and obviously I said Opja was the um, lower affiliate, so we loan them players. But yeah, Mitchelland in Denmark, Mitchelland in Denmark, have become our senior affiliate, and they pay us forty-six thousand pounds a month. I think it is or or a year, to, to have that joy of being our senior affiliate, which is very nice. I keep asking for improve the scouting range, but the board aren't having any of it. I guess we should look into finances, just to keep you up to date. 1.3 million in the bank, which is very nice indeed. I've spent all of the transfer budget I had, but I actually ploughed most of it into wage budget. Um, because as you see, we haven't really bought anyone of value. We're still not broken the £100,000 mark for a player yet, which is quite weird now that I think about it we got very close with Tom Zerger and Michael Mert but I normally love to spend the cash this is a very different sort of save for me um, I think that's why I'm enjoying it so much because I love a one club save we've discussed that before and I always said the NK Maribor was the best save I did this is running it very close now but with Maribor we're already the biggest club um, in in the league we're already the top league so aha right there is news Zeki Friars might be coming back. Um, I just, I had to. As soon as he made, was made available for loan again, after that performance last season, I was like, yeah, I've sort of got to, haven't I? Because he was so good. So, yes, Zeki Friars is going to come back in. And I'm now very tempted to get this Argentinian land in. Look, he's got... Generally, the easiest thing to summarise this in, there's a lot of white on the board. There's a lot of white in those stats, and white is good. 
White is very, very good. Now, he won't play as an attacking midfielder unless we change formation. But he would easily be the most expensive player at the club. We'd be forking out a lot of money for him. I think, I think we go for it because I think he's going to be pretty damn good. And what does it matter if it doesn't work? <laughs> what does it matter if it doesn't work? It's not my money. It's the new owner's money. So, yeah. Okay, excellent. And that does mean, so I knew that Friars was more than likely going to join us again. So I already put Ivancic out for loan because Friars is so much better than him. But... There we go. So yeah, Zeki Friars is back in. A bit of dead, a bit of transfer news on the spot for you. Zeki Friars is back in. Thirty years old. It's a much cheaper loan than last year as well, um, which is fantastic because he was absolutely quality. Um, and then yeah, we've brought in Lionel Buka, who does look very, very good. I'm sorry, he looks very, very good. Oh, that's like, well, fuck me. We're paying a lot of money for that, but. I'm excited. I'm very excited by this year. I think this could be a good, good year for NK Zaga fans. So all the first games have been played. I do could play two in a top. So with the same golf, all we need is a 1-0 win in our second game. And we go top of the league. How fantastic is that? Let me know down below what you think of all the signings. And what you think of the players who just bought in on loan. Is getting Zeki Fryers back the right idea? You guys that comment will know. I reply to every single comment I get. If you think you want to leave a comment, be like, oh, no, most YouTubers don't get back to me. I do. I will reply to nearly every... Unless it somehow goes into the spam because YouTube thinks it's spam, and then it takes me a while to actually remember to go and check my spam folder. But if you leave a comment, I'll reply to it. Even if it just says hello, I'll say hello back with a little smiley face, probably, or a thumbs up because I love a thumbs up in the emojis. But, um, yeah, I'm rambling. That's such a common theme of my outros, isn't it? Thank you so much for watching. I will be responding to comments as soon as I can after my parents have probably flown on to Pastures New because they're going on to New Zealand. But, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. But for now, I'm out. Cheers.